Hello, uh, we're going to look at the milling machine today, it's fitting and turning level 2. Uh, obviously our time is constrained so we're going to try our best covering as much of the topic as we can. Uh, first we're going to look at what can be done by this machine. Quite a number of different machining operations from uh, surface milling, uh, machining uh, gears, uh, machining keyways, dovetails, T-slots, all those different operations can be performed on the milling machine. Now obviously there's quite a number of different type of milling machines, starting with this one, which is known as a vertical milling machine, and it's very easy to see why, it's because of the position of the spindle in a vertical position. We do get horizontal milling machines, we get a universal milling machine which can be either horizontal or vertical and then we also get the turret type or the knee type which is mostly used by tool and die makers. So right, the first thing we need to know about this machine is the safety. Uh, it's one of those machines that if you don't work safe it can severely injure you. So the safety is normally divided up into a couple of sections and that's very important that you look at it because in the exam the safety will be asked in a specific way. The safety might be before you're going to work on a milling machine, while you're working on a milling machine, but it's normally divided first up into the envi environmental safety. And what do we mean by env environmental safety? It's the safety before you actually get to the machine. And it's not only applicable to a milling machine, it's applicable to any machine that you're going to operate. And the first thing is the floor area around your machine. The floor area must be clear of any obstruction, no oil or water or grease on the floor that might cause you to slip or fall. The next thing we're going to look at, light. There must be sufficient light. If there's not enough uh, natural light, you must bring in artificial light. And when you bring in artificial light, you must ensure that you don't use fluorescent lights because fluorescent lights have a stratoscopic effect on moving parts, which can be quite dangerous. The next part is sufficient ventilation, fresh air. And then lastly is just a nice working environment where you'll feel happy to work in. The next safety is your person. Your personal safety is important and that's where your PPE comes in. Personal, protective equipment and clothing. And that normally revolves around a full overall, in my case a dust coat. Very important when you work on machines is short sleeves. So uh, if your college issue with a long sleeve overall, the sleeves must be cut or at least roll up above the elbow. The next safety is safety shoes, eye protection, ear protection if you're working in a noisy environment. It's not always necessary in a machine shop to wear ear protection, but if it's noisy, ear protection. Another piece of safety equipment that will be worn from time to time is a dust mask. A dust mask is normally uh, worn when you work with materials such as cast iron uh, that uh, when you machine it, it gives a lot of dust and that dust uh, can be detrimental to your health. Long hair must be tied up into a, a net. No jewelry, no watches, nothing of that sort. No ties that can get caught in revolving machinery. Then we're going to look at, machine, at safety before you're actually going to operate the machine, before you do anything. And the first piece of safety is you must understand the machine. In other words, how does it work? Where's the on-off switches? Where's the emergency switch? Make sure that you know that. Make sure you understand all the different movements. Although you know the milling machine, it will vary from one milling machine to the other, just as you get from one vehicle to the other. In one vehicle, the indicator is at this side, on the other vehicle, it's at that side. So even if you've got a driver's license, it doesn't mean you can operate all cars 
It will take you five minutes just to familiarize yourself with the machine itself. All guards must be in place. Now in this machine there's just a few guards. There's just guards here that covers up the belts. But in general you must ensure that all guards are in place. Make sure that your cutting fluid is operating. Make sure that you got your artificial light that you got on your work. Now that's working. And now you're nearly ready to start operating the machine itself. Now, when it comes to the machine, and this is where most of the accidents happen, because you've got revolving machine equipment on your machine. So here, you must make sure that your cutting tool that will be fitted into your spindle, which I'll show a little bit later, is securely clamped, that your workpiece is securely clamped, that you have selected the correct speeds and feeds for your specific operation. And then while you are machining, you must give your full attention. In our word, take your cell phone, switch it off, uh, not talking to anybody else, give your full attention to the machine, don't leave the machine unattended. When you want to take measurements, make sure that the machine is switched off and came to a complete standstill before you take any measurements. Don't put your hand close to the cutter. Don't try to remove any shavings by hand while the machine is in motion. Use a paintbrush or a wire hook or wait till you can stop the machine before you remove any shavings on your machine. That is far as the safety is concerned on the machine. Now, just as in any machine, you must know the different components and you must be able to describe them because when you are given a work piece to uh, complete on a machine, it will quite often refer to the different components on the milling machine. And this is where it's very important that you must be able to indicate where the component is and what is the function of the component. Now, as I already mentioned, this is a a relatively small milling machine, but whether it's a big milling machine or a small milling machine, most of the components are the same. In this case, we'll start from the top, and right at the top we find our head. This whole portion here is known as the head. On your head, you'll find your drive motor, and your drive motor in most cases is connected to a gearbox, but it can also be belt driven, such as in this milling machine, where inside here is belt. So it makes it a bit of cumbersome if you have to change your speeds because you first have to open and only then change the belt to different size pulleys before you can change your speed. It's important that if you're going to do it in this case that the machine must be completely isolated at the main switch before you attempt to do any belt changes on it. So that's the head. The head got the motor, it got your drive, either belts or gears. It also contains your spindle. The spindle is the area where your cutting tool will be fitted. This portion over here is known as your ram. Now your ram can be adjusted in or out. Very simple. Loosen, lock screws here, and it's quite heavy, so you can either move it forward or backwards to a specific position. Just remember to lock it again in when you want, you have reached your position to lock it so it won't move during your machining process. The ram can also swivel from side to side. Then on your head itself, your head can also be twisted from side to side by just loosening some bolts here and it got a graduated scale in degrees so you can uh, cut at specific angles. Going down here, this area here is known as your column. Attached to your column is your knee. Your knee itself can be hoist or lowered to a specific position by a hoisting screw which is at the bottom. Your table, 
Your table is the area where your workpiece will be clamped, either in a vise or directly to the bed or using a dividing head. Your table itself also got locking screws. Just make sure that when you want to make any adjustments that the locking screws are loose. On your table you also got stops. These stops are when you use the automatic feet. Just to demonstrate, you'll see once the table stop reached the switch, it will stop automatically. It's a safety mechanism, so while you're machining is to ensure that you don't overrun your table. And there you see it stops automatically. And that can be adjusted to a specific position. Obviously the table can be moved by hand. On your knee is also your cross slide for moving your table in and out, in other words, on the Z axis. So you've got your X axis, your Z axis, and your Y axis. So those are the three axes you can work on. On some milling machines, the table can also be loosened and swing at a specific angle. On larger milling machines, you'll also will have automatic feet on the lowering and lifting of the table because in some machines they're quite heavy and it's difficult to lift. You'll also will find some milling machines that will have automatic feet on your cross slide. This one unfortunately only got one set of automatic feet and that is for your X axis on your table. Going a little bit lower, you'll find your base. Now the base is normally hollow and that can be filled with cutting fluid, which I'll talk a little bit later about what is the function of cutting fluid. Right, so there is our different components. So what have we covered? We had a look at the milling machine and what it is used for. We had a look at the different types of milling machines and we already mentioned this is a vertical milling machine. We also had a look at the different safety. The different safety we looked at is the environmental safety, personal safety, safety before you're going to work on a machine and safety while you are working on the machine. Now we come to the fun part and that is to fit our clamping device on the machine. And in this case, we're going to use a machine vise. With the machine vise, it's very important that it's set up correctly. Most machining errors is normally because of wrong setup of the clamping device. So I want to run through the procedure, setting up a vise square. Now why would we like to set up a vise square? It's very simple. If this is the workpiece and I have to machine, there's my cutter, let me just get a real cutter here, and I have to cut. This cutter has to run exactly parallel to the workpiece. But if my workpiece is skew, then I'm going to find that I'm going to mill skew. So it's very important that my workpiece is set up exactly square. Now to do that, obviously the vise have to be exactly square. Before we clamp any workpiece, we must ensure that our table is nice and clean. No dirt or any dust, shavings. Now we'll find that the table of the machine got T-slots in. And the T-slots will have T-bolts that will fit into the slot. By the way, 
Those T slots are one of the machining operations that a milling machine can perform. Obviously, we need a T slot cutter. So I'll utilize my two T-slot with my T-bolts. And I'll adjust it as best as I can, square just using my eye. Just remember, as far as possible, when you are using a ring flat spanner, always try to use the ring side, especially if it's possible to get it in. And the reason for that is, is to ensure that it doesn't slip. You'll also have seen that when I do tighten, I pull the spanner towards myself and not away from myself. Very simple reason, if it slip, I won't injure myself. Now this specific vise can also swivel and it also got a graduated scale. Sorry, it's 21. So we can see, we can adjust the vise to a specific angle if need be, but in this case, we want to get the vise to be exactly 100% square to the movement of the table. So I'll get my graduation scale to zero and I'll lock my table. Very important that you don't lock it too tight, just lightly, because you still must be able to adjust it. The next piece that we're going to require is a surface gauge. Now what is a surface gauge? The surface gauge come in a set and they come in all different sizes. They're neatly packed in a box and it's a piece of material that have been machined to an exact dimension. Hardened and grind to a very smooth finish. And in this case, you can see it's a 10 by 50 by 150. So it means the thickness is 10 millimeter, the width is 50, and the length is 150. And you'll see that once I remove it out of the box, I'll clean it, although it should be cleaned already, but I clean it again. And I'm going to fit it in my vise. Let it stick out about three quarters. Clamp it. Don't over tighten it because you don't want to damage your parallel strips. Next item I'm going to require is my claw gauge or dial indicator, which is accurate up to 0.1 of a millimeter. So if I move the needle, each little line there will represent 0.01 of a millimeter, which is one hundredth of a millimeter, which make it quite accurate. And I'm going to position my claw gauge 
on my column. Now comes the fun part. We have to adjust my vise so that it is 100% square. If it's not square, it's going to translate to my workpiece, which also going to result in it not being square. For that, I'm going to use my rubber mallet or soft hammer. Remember, I have not over tightened my vise. It's tightened, but not, not too tight. So that I can make my adjustments. All right, now we must have a look closer here. What I'm going to do is I make my needle touch on the side of my parallel strip and I'm going to move it up and down the length of the parallel strip. And at this stage I can see there's quite a bit of movement. As a matter of fact, there are two full revolutions of movement on my dial indicator, which indicate that it's off by at least two millimeter. At this stage, it seems like it's about two millimeter that way over this distance. So it means the vise have to be moved this way. Very important when you're going to hit your vise, don't hit it on the movable part. You can damage it. Hit it on the fixed part of the vise. That will ensure that you don't damage the screw inside your vise. And it already started looking better. I don't have to move it all the way. Starting to look better. Slightly out. Be careful not to hit it too much, otherwise you have to go to the other side. Very little bit. A little bit. And now I'm going to test it over the full length. If I want, I can use the automatic feet. If I'm lazy. And the needle is barely moving. Wait till it comes to a complete stop before you reverse. So that indicate now the device has been set up square. Remember you have not locked it. So now it's the time to lock it. I can check again and my vice is square. Now I'm ready to put any workpiece I would like in the vice and I will be guaranteed that it will cut square. 
Very important that when you use your claw gauge and by accident you run off. When you're going to move your table now, you're going to break that part. In that case, just pull your plunger back and then move it so it's again on the parallel strips. I've seen uh, a number of claw gauges where the front have been broken off and that's an expensive piece of equipment. Now I can remove my parallel strip. With my parallel strip, I'll make sure that I clean it properly and I'm not going to touch it with my hand again because if I touch it with my hand I'll leave some moisture behind and that will cause it to rust. If you want you can put a little bit of grease or a light layer of oil if you know you're going to not use it for a while and I can put it in its box where it will be stored in a cool dry place where there's no moisture. Right, my vice have been set up square. We've learned about the milling machine. The different type of milling machines, the safety involved when we are going to work on a milling machine, the different components on a milling machine, and we've learned how to set up a vice square to the table. Remember, we can also swing the vise in the other direction and then obviously we're going to use the cross slide, but the principle will be exactly the same. Tomorrow's lesson is how we're going to fit a cutter in the spindle, how to remove it safely, and we'll take a simple cut to demonstrate the correct direction, feet and speed. If you have any questions about today's lesson or any other uh, topic in fitting and machining, feel free to contact us at the information at the bottom of the screen. We will be available at all times to assist you.